What is going on guys and girls, how are you doing to that single roleplay here once again and today we're gonna be talking about the development manifesto. It has just been released today in the morning, it's about the balance in Path of Exile Bly League expansion. It's a pretty common process when grinding a game releases this uh, development manifesto and where they uh, tell us about the motivation behind the changes in the upcoming expansions and leaks and they're basically telling us why they are changing this or that, what's the motivation behind this, what are the reasons behind this and uh, basically they go in detail behind uh, the scenes of why they are changing the skill gems, the, the ascendancies and uh, this is kind of a before the patch notes. So the first they released the development manifesto and then the next day they were getting the skill gems and the patch notes themselves where we can see like in minor detail what things are changing there. So let's take a look. Before we go further into the video I would like to stop for a second and thank my Patreon supporters and Twitch subscribers. You guys have no fucking idea how much I'm thankful for you. If you just stop for a second and put likes on this video and share it with your friends, it will be already an insane amount of support and I will be forever grateful to every one of you. Thank you so much and remember... You, yes you, are making a difference. I have prepared an excerpt of the giant manifesto guys for you so you don't have to read all this shit. It's pretty fucking big. I was surprised on how big is this. It's like 10 pages of shit there. So I did like an excerpt of the shit to let you know what's the most important thing. First of all is global gem levels guys. What is global gem levels? Is caster oriented one handed weapons will now be able to roll some new modifiers with ground plus one to all fire, cold lightning, fisk and chaos spell skill gems. Not just the socket at. That's a big thing. And I get global plus one uh, skill gem modifiers. Staffs will be able to roll a modifier that grants plus two or plus, uh, plus one or plus two instead and have a rarer plus three. And it means that we can potentially have a plus three SRS staff, guys. Plus three juicy SRS staff. One ended caster weapons will be able to roll a very rare additional mod that grants plus one to all spell gems, and the staff version on the modifier will grant a plus two to uh, plus one to two to all spell gems. That's pretty insane. This is pretty insane. Um, how many spell gem levels we get from this? I'm pretty hyped, guys. I wonder if they will be like um, self-excluding. So you probably can't roll like plus three uh, on a staff and plus two to all spell gems. That would be ridiculous. I mean, plus five, plus fucking five on one staff. This sounds absolutely uh, uh, ridiculous. But uh, the thing about this has been uh, rumored uh, and uh, is actually been confirmed by GGG. And you can see that this does not apply to support gems. Only active skill gems. Plus two, uh, plus one, uh, plus three on uh, the two handed staff. So if you have like Herald of Agony and you can get a staff, you get to the Herald of Agony. If you run, for example, Spectre, SRS, and Herald of Agony, you get plus two uh, or three to all of them, but only to the active skill, skill gems. Here we go. Pretty strong. So Essence of Rage, Sorrow, and Spite now apply Fire Call, Lightning, Penetration, respectively, to the weapons. So basically. I think that Essence of Rage cannot roll plus two fire now, right? So this fire has been uh, removed and the low level crafting has also been removed to um, to get early on this uh, fire, but uh, basically this elemental uh, level. So uh, Essence of Rage I think has been uh, changed as well. As you can see it cannot, it can, will roll penetration instead of the levels, which is pretty bad. Uh, big changes to the... Um, some unique uh, with minions like Bones of Uller, guys. Bones of Uller have been always been giving plus one spectre, but now it's changing. Bones of Uller now grants plus one to all raised zombie gems and all raised spectre gems instead of affecting the maximum minion count. So basically, just raises zombie uh, and spectre gem plus one, but it doesn't affect the amount of spectres and zombies you get. Uh, it pro probably can affect the zombies you're leveling up, you're getting more zombies, right? But the spectres you don't get more spectres for practically. It doesn't really affect Spectres anymore. 
that's the reason why we get pl uh, two spectres instead of one on the spectre gem now. So it looks like it's a nerf actually. <laughs> it's a big nerf actually. Bones of War will be like one um, one alteration now. Traps and mines. The Shaper and Elder modifiers to the granite plus one to traps thrown and mines place will no longer appear. So they are gone entirely. Shaper mod are gone for mines. They are also introducing changes to the trap support, which now grants a high value of trap prop speed and an increase to trap damage to the gem levels, guys. So a biggest question when we saw the mine overview, like what happens? What happens to the traps? Are they shit now? Are mine completely uh, surpassing uh, traps? No. Traps are getting a buff as well. That's a good thing. So two-handed incursion weapons with trap damage modifiers now have values higher than one-handed incursion weapons and the bonus is applied to mine damage as well. This is a big thing. You guys no idea how big is this. So basically now we can get mine modifiers on a one-handed and a two-handed. Right? Uh, so basically uh, previously and right now in the Legion League you can only get trap modifiers on two-hander. So uh, during the leveling you just get traps. You don't get mines, uh, mine damage on anything. Now you get both mine and trap, and this is a big thing. And another reason to play mines. Damage over time. Uh, replaced all non ailment chaos damage over time multipliers with chaos damage over time multipliers. So they now apply to poison as well. This is practically done to make poison vile again, guys. And this is pretty big thing. Uh, and another reason to try the assassin next leak. Uh, this basically uh, is there's also a big change to the perfect agony uh, Notable passive it has been dramatically changed and it means that the investing in crit multiplier now is more rewarding for the either ailment builds like if you're running poison You can also invent invent into crit multiplier so previously it kind of lowered uh, the crit multiplier, but again more ailment damage uh, This is how perfect perfect agony work now it actually is becoming better, like in general, without overcomplicating things for you. Perfect Agony has been reworked and gives you more a boost to the uh, to the ailment damage if you invest into crit multiplier. So Perfect Agony just got better, and the flask also got better. Many passive that increase burning damage, poison damage, and bleeding damage now they have equivalent damage over time multiplier bonus. So, so this is a pretty much big damage over time reward, guys, and I can't wait to see. All these many uh, builds for damage over time spawning fucking everywhere. Where well, yeah, there are also new item modifiers and crafting modifiers that apply to fire damage over time multiply or ignite damage over time multiply. Now this is pretty where it becoming pretty fucking complex. I think uh, this was a kind of a wrong idea to separate ignite damage time over, over time multiply and fucking fire damage over time multiply this is ridiculous why just you can't do one fucking fire damage over time multiply why I need two fucking fire damage over time multiply this is ridiculous fucking retard I mean cold has one chaos has one why the fuck fire has two <sighs> The burning damage changes guys are big and since we're getting a lot of um, uh, fire damage over time multipliers now Riders Fire has also received some mechanical changes. It now deals a smaller portion of the health as fire damage to enemies around you but has an additional burning damage value that increases as the gem levels. Basically what it means, it don't need to run 10,000 life on a Riders Fire because uh, you can just invent into the fire damage over time, into burning damage, as a result you gain the same amount of damage as you had like invested into life. So there's no need to invest into thousands and billions, thousands of uh, life on the uh, Riders fight. That's a pretty good thing actually. Minions. Minions have had the accuracy increase. This was my big concern since we lost the uh, uh, the uh, hits can be evaded of skeletons ascendancy and I had big concerns about the accuracy. But it looks like it's not an issue. The result of this is that a level 20 raid zombies summon skeleton raging spirit have 80% chance to hit in the level 84 enemy if you have no minion accuracy modifiers. That's pretty good. Golems have all been reviewed and adjusted to make some varieties of golems have competitive levels of power. Chaos, Lightning and Stone Golem have been improved in various ways to make them more competitive uh, with Flame and Ice Golems as well as the new Karen Gun. That's pretty interesting. Uh, the targeting of SRS has changed. If you are targeting uh, a monster when it casts SRS, 
a raging spirit creator will attempt to attack the enemy first. It's pretty big and it's pretty much was a big issue with the Legion because uh, the Legion you have to, you had to actually be like super close to these rare monsters to let the SRS target the fucking frozen rares instead of just flying in all fucking direction, especially problematical in the delve. It has specifically noted it in my SRS build that, that SRS has no targeting, but now we have the targeting for SRS, it's becoming way better. Uh, another change, the minion and totem elemental resistance support has been changed to any elemental army support. It no longer applies to totems, but let's support the minions apply a minus 10 exposure based on the highest elemental damage dealt that grants them more elemental damage. Well, that's pretty damn silly, actually pretty strong. So if you attach this fucking uh, resistance to some, uh, you know, flame golem or whatever, he actually is becoming pretty tanky and deals 10% uh, more damage. Really crazy. I think this is absolutely fantastic, another uh, support gem for the minions. That's pretty good. Convocation cooldown has been shown as uh, once again we had concerns about the removal of Convocation on the Necromancer Ascendancy. It has been shortened just by default. Desecrate has it as cooldown removed and now has a shorter cast time. It has a shorter duration and a lower course limit but it will make a much more reliable tool for both mini builds and builds to export courses. Very good. Offerings now more reliable. Easier to manage, they now have a higher base duration, gain an additional second for each currency. So basically it was always an issue for me. Uh, previously you had to use increased duration for the most offerings because offerings has to wear out in like a fucking couple of seconds. But I think that now you can run it without increased duration and this is a pretty big thing for me personally. The Dead Reckoning Unique Jewel can now turn out to 15 Skeletons Warriors into Mages. Up from 5 it is now limited to 1. Jeez, man, this is pretty silly. This makes uh, the uh, Necro with the Mages build absolutely fantastic, guys. I have never personally played the Skeleton Mages, but I know it's a very strong build. And if you're looking for a build to play, this probably is the build to play right now. So once again, new Convoking Van, which has got an exclusive Minion Van with uh, Minion modifiers. Incursion item minion modifiers have been changed and improved. Very nice. Uh, minion movement speed modifier has been added, which you can craft outside of the essences. This is absolutely fantastic. Finally, finally, we can craft minion movement speed without fucking throwing essence shit. This is pretty badass. Uh, the, now comes the problems. Mana for spellcasters. In 3.8 uh, we've changed all remaining sources of mana leech after uh, replacing the stats or changing them to only leech from attacks. And the general philosophy is that mana sustained for spellcasters should be something a player has to think about and find some way to manage similar to accuracy for attack characters. However, we don't, we don't want the solution to be a huge investment and we've tried to provide a few different and interesting ways to sustain mana recovery. So basically what they want us to do guys is uh, they are removing uh, the leech, uh, the mana leech for the spellcasters entirely from the tree whatsoever. You cannot leech this shit anymore. They really want to, uh, they really want spellcasters to uh, use fucking uh, mana flask. They are forcing us to use mana flask. So in 3.7, uh, they uh, completely got rid of healing for the spellcasters and now they're getting rid of the mana leech for the spellcasters. So literally they're cutting, they, they cut the fucking legs in the, in the, in the melee league and now they're cutting the arms off and they're literally like a fucking uh, retard there, you know, casting shit, dying and uh, running out of mana. I don't understand what's the deal about it. Why are they killing spellcasters? Why are they doing it? I mean, it's not really a very uh, popular, there are many spells in the game, but no one gives a shit about them. How long have you seen a, a player casting fireballs or frostballs or freezing poles? I don't know, something. I know you haven't seen this shit. Obviously, for a reason, it's hard to leave as a spellcaster. You can't fucking leech anything. You can't fucking sustain anything as a spellcaster. What's the fucking reason behind this? I can understand only one motivation behind this. Uh, I think they are really, they don't care about the balance. They care about being true to the core of the spellcaster kind of philosophy, right? Their philosophy. So spellcasters should be casting fucking spells 
and using a mana flask. A fucking mana flask is designed for the spellcasters, right? Uh, hey, they can't leech mana, that's too easy. Let's let them fucking suffer, you know. They fucking should be dying, the squishy motherfuckers. Just, just get rid of everything, just, uh, you know. Pff, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Uh, instead, they're giving us uh, fucking passives that kind of make, makes our loss easier, make our life easier, right? Passives that affect Mana Flask have been added or improved, including the new Essence Extraction Notable that grants Mana Flask one charge every three seconds. So, what the fucking reason behind this? Just fucking give us Mana Leech. Just give and fucking give us Life Leech on the, on the Spellcaster. Don't need to force us in a fucking mana flask, fucking idiots! I mean, that's ridiculous! And another thing, guys, a nerf to the cyclone. Stats that subtracted from the final mana cost of skills made mana, made managing managing mana for certain channel skills far too simple. <laughs> We've split this mod into a channel and a non-channel skill version. With the channel skill version granting a much small reduction. Fuck you, Cyclone users. Fuck you. Fuck you, Cyclone. Fuck you. <laughs> so you're getting ran out of this shit again and using Mana Flask on a Cyclone build. <laughs> That's so funny now. And no fun allowed. I mean, fuck this. You get fun. You get fun for one link. Now fucking throw away cyclone shit. Like forget about it. We're nerfing the the range. We're nerfing the fucking mana cost. Like fuck you guys. <laughs> All right. No fun allowed for the, with the. Uh, you already had fun in one league. So fuck it. Just forget about it anymore. All right. The reduced mana support has been reworked and is now an inspiration support. In addition to reducing mana cost and now grants an inspiration charge, each time you spend mana with the supported skill up to 5 charges, so it's pretty cool actually. The supported skill gains more elemental damage and critical chance for each inspiration charge. So this is how they are motivating us to spend mana. After spending more than a specified amount of mana, the inspiration charges are removed. Rich rewards you in investing in reducing the mana cost of your skills as much as possible to maximize the optimal of inspiration. Interesting. Interesting ideas to force us into mana cost and fucking mana flask. <laughs> Clarity regeneration has been increased. Alright, so melee, guys, moving to the melee. Cyclone nerf. Rather than punishing other skills that use melee range, we've changed how Cyclone calculates its area, making the increase grand and the additive with other area increase. So Cyclone is turning to shit now. Uh, not to shit, but it's getting back to normal thing, guys. But uh, this is actually, this is kind of a nerf, actually. This is a nerf, but this is a buff. This has meant that we've been able to provide more melee range on the passive tree. Master of the Arena, Brinksmanship, Bonebreaker and Splitting Strider plus 2 melee range. And uh, some of these guys plus 1, so way oh, more melee range. That it's was actually a pretty good. Alright, thank you. <laughs> this will improve the area of the strike attack. So basically, a cyclone gets a nerf, but everything else gets a buff with the melee range. It's actually very strong. This will improve the area of strike attacks, making them easier to use and more effective on at taking on packs of enemies. That's very, very fucking nice, guys. You know, I suffered a lot and uh, from playing Glacial Hammer, and I hope that these changes will make Glacial Hammer actually viable way more. And Castle Call support has had its damage penalty lowered, resulting in no damage penalty at level 20 of the gem. This is to further help the clearing capacity of strike attacks. Fantastic change. This is fantastic. Multi strike. Trying to say multi strike. I don't give a shit. It's still crap. Uh, we've lowered the added physical damage on retaliation attacks because of high. high. The damage output could be when used with face breakers. This bad damage has been increased to compensate. No. The fucking counter attacks was fucked in the ass. No! How much the da they lowered the fizz damage? I wonder. I wonder what the fucking numbers are. I, ho I hope it's a survive. I mean, the fucking build was amazing. And now comes the nerves. That's all, all just the fucking nerves here. 
So pulverize support increases uh, now provides increased area of effect instead of more area of effect. It's fucking fucked in the ass. Uh, gets more damage, but no fucking more area damage. That's more, more no more area of effect. That's badass. That's shit. Uh, I've already seen like angry Reddit threads about this. That literally was the only gem that could turn. From fucking nowhere effect with some air of effect without a great inf investment. But this uh, basically removes this at all. Tornado shot. Uh, plus one, uh, plus no more two projectiles, guys. We're uh, getting plus one in the Uber lab, and it's the oh, it's uh, just the Uber lab. It is, you can't get it on the Mercy Labs lab anymore, so Tornado Shot goes fucked in the ass pretty hard. Now this is above to my build! Add, uh, added lightning damage to lightning arrow and add cold damage to the ice shot. Guys, lightning damage to the lightning arrow. Forget Tornado Shot, play fucking lightning arrow, guys. Here we go. The spells, Contagion, another nerf. Contagion no longer gains radius as the gem levels. The skill provided too much clearing capacity over large area at high levels. Fucked in the ass. This uh, screen clearing fucking Contagion EED, man, in the, the glaciers. That was fucked in the ass. You had fun, now you had no fun anymore. Alright, body swap has been revoked. This is very interesting. I've been checking body swap by the way, it looks very interesting. So passive tree changes, there's a pretty a lot of them, we'll be seeing them tomorrow in the patch notes, but uh, the most important thing that I've noticed is that a new power charge cluster similar to the endurance and frenzy charges once they add it in a 3.7, so we get power charge cluster somewhere. Alright, the elementalist has had its golem path adjusted, providing much more power to the player on the invested golem character, while no longer being the only way for a character to get the additional golems outside of the unique items, thanks to a new golem, golem cluster on the passive tree. I need to check it. Where this golem cluster on the passive tree? Give it to me. Nice. I wonder where is that actually. I haven't seen the leak tree there, but I'm gonna check it out. The occult is vile bastion now also grants 40 energy shield region per second. 40 region. Uh, shit! It's like, if at 10,000, this is 0.4%? Uh, oh, 40 energy shield, I can see it. It, it! Is it even regenerating? It is so fucking tiny! It's like a fucking stone! It's less than a fucking stone golem! Are you fucking kidding me? It's less than a fucking stone golem! Stone golem gives what, 100 regen? This is fucking less than a stone golem, are you fucking kidding me? Just bring back the fucking occultist! Ridiculous! Fuck you, dude! What the hell is that? That's fucking... A joke of some kind? So, another nerf, Bezeka and Slayer were a little too powerful for a tag build, so some nodes have had values adjusted. The Slayer's Bane of Legends has had the value of attack and move speed grinder reduced by 10%. Overwhelm has had its base critical chance lowered to 7.5. Bezekas Crave the Slaughter no longer grants a chance to deal double damage, with this bonus being moved to the Warbringer. Whoo, that's actually good. I using a Warbringer, boys. So I'm saved. Flawless Average now grants a lower value of critical life chance for attacks and slightly Less multi, that's not big of a deal, that's okay. The trickster is nerfed again! The trickster's ghost dance passive was providing a bit too much defense for a single notable, so the chance to evade reduced damage, taking off the amount of energy shield recovered has been lowered again. Fucking trickster in the ass! Trickster in the ass! I told you guys, trickster will be nerfed again and again because it was ridiculous! No fucking effort. Ghost Dance gave you retarded shit. Now it was nerfed twice, and I really hope it gets back to the occultist and it just be the dumpster. Like here is a uh, occultist in the dumpster, and there's like his baby brother Trickster in the dumpster, like playing in the garbage. Avail modifiers, guys. This is the most important thing we're waiting for. 
So modifiers granted only by items from specific syndicate members now require half as many unveils turn and craft. They are also more likely to appear as one of the potential modifiers. Good. Modifiers only found on less common items. Types on that are limited to only one or two item types are much more likely to appear as invalid options. All right. Flash modifiers from the mastermind. You can only want one to unlock. I mean, that's fucking good. Uh, that's still uh, not excluding the existing, I guess. But it got better, but it's still not excluding the, exi the existing mods. They just... This kind of thing is um, to appear... Uh, as more likely to appear it still can appear and not appear so it's still shit uh, they will be monitoring the changes of this so that's it uh, they also reduce the chance for a league mechanic that drops a random unique to drop a league specific unique this ended up being the most common source of league specific uniques in some league guess what guys a lot of people got headhunters just playing the legion and this is how a lot of people got it, uh, they got the uh, headhunter from the syndicate, from the uh, legion and uh, basically this is what is um, reduce, uh, reducing the chance that you can't really get this shit anymore from the league. <laughs> Alright, that's a nerf. <laughs> Alright, there's another uh, couple of buffs over there but not very important but uh, the uh, poet spin has been buffed, uh, the cooldown has been reduced by 0 0.15 seconds. And also triggers on finishing and an attack. And also the blast from his grasp and now gives plus four to damage over time multiplier for ailments for each elder item equipped. Instead of 15% increased damage to them. So they became a multiplier. Overall, guys, this is it. You can see this pretty lengthy. There's 10 pages of shit. And this is the excerpts that I created for you. And this is like way more than a uh, the whole thing, uh, this is like way less than the whole thing, like reading the whole shit is just ridiculous, like 10 pages of shit, so let me know in the comment section guys, what do you think about these changes, are you hyped or not, and we're waiting for the patch notes. Thanks for watching, and see you soon. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for watching the video, your likes and dislikes, especially as they push me forward even more. If you want to see more content, please consider subscribing to the channel, I do daily uploads of role-playing content, Bennett builds, guides, let's play, stream highlights and upcoming RPG games. Also, don't forget to follow my Twitch stream to catch me live in action, I do stream daily on walking days. I'm a full-time YouTube content creator and a Twitch streamer too, so if you want to support me, you can do it either from Twitch or by PayPal directly from my website angryrollplayer.com. Join my Discord channel too for a place to discuss RPG things offline as well as follow my Twitter to be notified on any new content. If you want to get extra information like sneak peeks into upcoming videos, plans, different behind-the-scenes footage, you can also join the Unholy Army on Patreon as well, guys. Thank you very much once again for watching listening to all this. See you soon.